Hi, I'm Kiri Nichol, and um, I have a background in physics. I have a PhD in physics. After that, I did a postdoc in medical imaging, and that was sort of how I realized that machine learning was about to get really good, because I was looking at medical images all day. And somebody also showed me Kaggle, and I looked at the problems, and I thought, oh, all these problems are super juicy, and I have some idea of how to go about approaching them, and it kind of made me really curious to dig in. Uh, and then uh, I moved back to Canada, I'd been living abroad, and I uh, was unemployed, and Kaggle uh, filled that void in my life where I needed some meaning and activity, so I got, I got into Kaggle that way. Uh, well, Titanic, and then I worked on, um, there is a problem to segment um, from the ele electrical usage in a house, you had to pick out which appliances were being used, uh, so lights, stove, hair dryer, uh, and yeah, I, I, think, I don't think that there was any real like deep machine learning or um, sophisticated machine learning going on. You could get quite a long way with heuristics, uh, but that was how I got into uh, working on some problems. I started Kaggle just after Dogs and Cats, which was really the first competition that was one with uh, deep learning, and so it took a little while for um, imaging competitions to sort of get going. I did the I did the retinopathy com, uh, competition, and I also did a competition to examine uh, medical tissues and um, um, predict uh, whether the person was at risk of cervical cancer. The imaging that I'd work with was also quite different. From the, the retinopathy challenge was like optical images of people's um, backs of people's eyes and the other competition was literally like photographs from a camera and the other data that I'd worked with during my postdoc was all uh, like uh, CT images and so all of those there are different modalities they have different uh, things that are important about them uh, there's there's different limitations in terms of like how big the images are and, and, you ha and whether you have to be careful about being really efficient to deal with uh, really large images so yeah it was really like working with completely different kinds of data well, I'm probably going to pick a competition to identify when someone is having an epileptic seizure. So they gave, the data you were given was uh, signals from electrodes in people's brains and actually dogs' brains as well. So you had 16 electrodes and you got squiggle, squiggle, squiggle out of the electrodes. And then you had to predict, is this person having a seizure? Are they in a pre-seizure state or are they not having a seizure? And uh, it, it, this competition was interesting to me not really because of the competition but because I did something really goofy in it which was to take the squiggle 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 and turn it into a picture which I showed to a pre-trained Covnet algorithm and this actually managed to do uh, pretty decently on Kaggle like it, it was not amazing but it was it, like top 25 percent I think and what this made me realize was that um, deep learning could do feature building and it made me not want to train myself to do feature building because I knew that the machine was going to be able to do it better than me. I think, well, one, one of my superpowers is generally that I'm very careful about not overfitting. Um, there, I, the medical imaging challenge with, uh, that I talked about, there is uh, where people, the doctor took uh, a photo of the tissue. Uh, it t somebody early on in the competition worked out that the, um, the aspect ratio of the image was actually useful in predict predicting what class the uh, tissue belonged to, and of course, this doesn't make any sense, but what turns out to have been happening, or what my hypothesis is, is that, uh, that each doctor has a camera, and every doctor had a different camera that took a different aspect ratio image. So and each doctor also serves a different patient population. So when a doctor takes a photo and you have just the aspect ratio, you can just, um, it, it's like knowing whose doctor you have that will tell you something about whether you have 80% class one, 15% class two, 5% class three, or maybe 50% class one, 45% class two, 5% class three. So you, knowing just which doctor was operating the camera was telling you information about the patients that they were serving. I've been mostly a deep learning person for the last two years, so I would pick PyTorch, Keras, and actually Matplotlib uh, because it's really useful to be able to look at your um, your data and figure out uh, does this make sense or is this what I expect it to be, and Matplotlib is super handy for that. 
Well, I have to say that I did really badly on a competition, so the thing that I relearned, which I really should have known, was uh, be, be really careful uh, not to overfit and cross-validate carefully. So, so this is where that superpower came from. Yeah, well, <laughs> I needed a refresher. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely the, this, uh, the, the competition I did in the fall uh, where I overfit, um, I, I'm really interested in using deep learning to, uh, to do automated feature building. So I worked on the challenge to um, look at data from a telescope and predict uh, what phenomena is this, are, are you observing in the signal. And uh, I wanted to do automatic feature building with the, the signal you're getting from the telescope. And I, uh, yeah, I did, I overfit. I think my favorite part of Kaggle Days has been meeting people who, who I've only ever seen what they've posted in the forum and then finding out their personality is completely different from what I expected it to be based on what they write in the forums. <laughs> in a positive way or a negative way? Oh, in a positive way. <laughs> so are people are a lot nicer in person than you're online? No, I wouldn't say that's the case. People are really nice. Actually, one of the things I like about Kaggle is that people are very civil in the forums. Uh, but I, you know, I guess I have my little generative network that's, you know, you read something and you imagine how this person talks and how this person stands and what kind of personality they have and then it turns out to be completely different, so. But not in a bad way, just different.